I'm 187 and this is the 187 said podcast. So welcome again to another episode of the 187 said podcast. As I say, my name is 187. I'll have to apologize for the infrequency of these podcasts. So I'm going to try and make sure that we get one out at a minimum every two weeks. Now I've said it, I'm going to have to do that. And the reason for that is because if I want to do this on a full time basis, and if I'm expecting people to invest in me by donating to our Patreon, then I need to work a bit harder. Let's kick off with the next episode. So this episode is going to touch on or we're going to cover um, the domestic abuse bill. First off, I'm going to talk about who under the act is considered a victim of domestic abuse. And this is going to be quite important, quite an interesting um, change from the existing legislation. A kind of a nod to the fact that the world is changing into the different types of relationships that are available. I'm going to look at who can be a victim of domestic abuse. And then we're going to touch on exactly what domestic abuse is and what the act covers and probably give us some examples talk about what you can possibly do if you are a victim of domestic abuse okay so how do you categorize a victim the act in itself says that two people who are personally connected to each other now later on you'll see that it could be more than two people who are connected to each other but initially we're talking about two people that who have been or are married to each other or they've been in a civil partnership or they've agreed to marry and that agreement has not been terminated or you are or have been in an intimate personal relationship with each other so we're talking about the one night stands we're talking about um, friends with benefits also or there has been a time when you've each had a parental responsibility in relation to a child if you are the father and being abused if you're the mother being abused by your own children or it's a cousin uncle whatever if you are related then it's also counts now this is one of the key elements as well that we kind of need to understand is that under the the new domestic abuse bill 2021 children are considered victims of domestic abuse this means any person under the age of 18 definitely have a look at the children's act i think it's 1989 a child is deemed a victim of domestic abuse if that child sees or hears or experiences the effect of the abuse then they're a victim as well and this is very important for us to take on board there's a wider range of relationships rather than just the binary man and woman and this act has gone some way to cover all of that so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the types of domestic abuse so psychological abuse physical abuse sexual abuse financial or economic abuse and also emotional abuse the act also covers controlling but also coercive behavior so what i'd like to do is to just talk about what controlling behavior is now it's looked at or it's understood to be a range of acts designed to make a person subordinate or dependent by isolating them from sources of support exploiting their resources depriving them of the means needed for independence resistance and escape and regulating their everyday behavior when we talk about resistance and escape we're talking about reducing their choices Coercive behaviour is slightly different. It's an act or a pattern of acts of assault, threats, humiliation and intimidation or other abuse that is used to harm, punish or frighten their victims. Now we move on to psychological or stroke emotional abuse. Psychological abuse involves regular and deliberate use of a range of words or non-physical actions used with the purpose to manipulate, hurt, weaken or frighten a person mentally or emotionally and or distort confuse or influence a person's thoughts and actions within their everyday lives 
So economic abuse is controlling finances, stealing money, coercing someone into debt, restricting, exploiting, sabotaging their partner's access to money and other resources such as food, clothing, transportation and a place to live. Obviously this is a podcast for men and it could be any man no matter what their background, age, race or sexuality. Whether you're five foot five or six foot five, it makes no difference if the perpetrator is four foot two or six foot five. You can still be a victim of domestic abuse. I've worked with many men. How do I term this? If you saw them on the other side of the room, you'd regard them as someone who can handle themselves. Um, not that that's a way to judge what a man is. Okay, let's give you examples of what physical abuse is. So this is being kicked, punched, pinched, slapped, dragged, scratched, choked, bitten, pushed, stabbed, the use of threats or the use of weapons, including knives and irons, being scalded, burnt or poisoned, objects being thrown, including food, drinks, cutlery, violence against family members or pets, causing you physical harm by denying you access to medical aids or equipment, harming you whilst performing care duties. So this is very relevant for those who are disabled and have a carer. So this would include things like um, force feeding, withdrawal of medicine or over medication. So let's look at psychological and emotional abuse. So this involves regular or deliberate use of a range of words or non-physical actions used with the purpose to manipulate, hurt, weaken or frighten a person mentally and emotionally or distort, confuse or influence a person's thoughts and actions within their everyday lives, changing their sense of self and harming their well-being, sabotaging their partner's access to money and or other resources such as food, clothing, transportation and a place to live and it's designed to limit someone's freedom. This can happen to anybody, no matter what background, age, job, race or sexuality. Let me give you some examples of physical abuse. So physical abuse includes things like being kicked, punched, pinched, slapped, dragged, scratched, choked, bitten, pushed, stabbed, use of threats or use of weapons including knives and irons, being scolded, burnt or poisoned, objects being thrown including food, drinks, cutlery, violence against family members or pets, causing you physical harm by denying you access to medical aids or equipment. And this one is particularly um, important if you're a disabled person, harming you whilst performing care duties. So that's including things like force feeding, withdrawal of medicine or over medicating. An example of isolation is limited outside involvement such as family, friends and work colleagues not allowing any activity outside the home that does not include the partner or other perpetrators and constant checking on your whereabouts. An example of verbal abuse is constant yelling and shouting, verbal humiliation either in private or in company, constantly being laughed at and being made fun of, blaming you for their own failures, insults and threats and mocking someone about their disability, gender, sexual orientation, physical appearance, etc. Mocking your sexual performance, including in front of friends, work colleagues, and on social media. An example of threatening behavior, threats of violence, the threat of use of weapons, including knives and irons, the threat and use of violence against family members and pets, threatening to use extended family members to attack you, destroying your personal and treasured items, threatening to tell the police that you are the person committing the domestic abuse, committing sexual abuse, including against your own children, threatening to remove your children, saying that you'll never see them again or they will take them abroad without your permission. Here's examples of emotional and psychological abuse, intimidation, withdrawing affection, 
and giving you the silent treatment, turning your children and friends against you, being stopped from seeing friends or relatives, constantly being insulted, including in front of others, repeatedly being belittled, keeping you awake, stopping you sleeping, sleep deprivation, excessive contact, for example, stalking, using social media sites to intimidate you, such as Facebook and Twitter, willfully stopping fathers from seeing their children by breaching court orders or child arrangement orders, manipulating your anxieties or beliefs, telling that you are to blame for the abuse and injuries that you sustained, persuading you to doubt your own sanity or mind, i.e. gaslighting, telling you you are not the father of your children, telling you that you're not a real father, Denying the abuse committed against you ever happened or trying to minimise it. Telling you your bruises, cuts and injuries are not serious. Accusing you falsely of having affairs or constantly looking at other women. Mocking your sexual performance including in front of friends, work colleagues and on social media. So examples of power and control. Abusers believe that they have the right to control their partners by telling you telling you what to do and expecting obedience. So telling you you will never see your children again if you leave, using force to maintain power and control, not accepting responsibility for their abuse, continual and purposeful breach of family court orders and forced marriage. So examples of financial abuse, totally controlling the family income, not allowing you to spend any money unless permitted, making you account for every pound you spend, running up huge bills such as credit cards in your name, including without you even knowing, purposely defaulting on payments, setting up false companies' accounts or credit cards, deliberately forcing you to go back to the family courts as a means of costing you additional legal fees, refusing to contribute to household incomes, interfering with or preventing you from formalising your immigration status so that you are economically dependent on the perpetrator, preventing you from claiming welfare benefits, for someone to commit benefit fraud or misappropriating such benefits, interfering with your education, training or employment, not allowing you access to mobile phone, cars, utilities, etc. Damaging your property, denying you food or only allowing you to eat that particular type of food. This can also include preventing you from being in education or employment, limiting your working hours, taking your pay, refusing to let you claim benefits, as I've just mentioned, refusing to let you own your own bank account, controlling how and when money is spent, dictating what you can buy, making you ask for money or providing you with an allowance, checking your receipts and bank statements, making you keep a spending diary, making you justify every purchase you made, insisting that all economic assets such as um, savings, the house, etc. are in their name and keeping financial information secret. Um, Building up debt in your name, this might have been with or without your knowledge. Examples of sexual abuse, sexual harassment, pressure and or sexual acts including with other people, forcing sex forcing sex after physical assaults, sexually degrading language, rape, forcing you to have sex or commit a sexual act against your will, unwanted sexual contacts and demands, forced involvement into making or watching pornography, deliberately being hurt during sex, being pressurised or tricked into having unsafe sex, your partner telling you that they are taking contraception when they are deliberately not Examples of false allegations. So telling the police or threatening to tell the police that you are the one committing the domestic abuse when it's the other way around. Telling your friends, family, employers and others or threatening to do so. False allegations of other crime such as abusing children. Examples of being stalked. Stalking can consist of any type of behaviour such as following you to and from work checking your email and phone calls, regularly sending gifts, making unwanted or malicious communications, damaging property on clothes, physical or sexual assault. Examples of digital and social media abuse. 
so they could be stalking you, placing false malicious information about you on other social media pages, placing false and malicious information about you on your or other social media pages, being trolled, having no control on your content or not allowed to have access, revenge porn, monitoring control in your email and phone calls including work emails and calls, image-based abuse, for example, the non-consensual distribution of private sexual photographs and films with the intent to cause you distress, hacking into, monitoring or controlling email accounts, social media profiles and phone calls, blocking you from using online accounts, responding in the victim's place or creating false online accounts, using spyware or GPS locators on items such as phones, computers, wearable technology, cars, motorbikes and pets, hacking internet-enabled devices such as Playstations or iPads to gain access or trace information such as your location, using wearable devices such as smart watches or smart home devices such as Alexa, Google Home Hubs, etc. to monitor, control or frighten you, use of hidden cameras, types of coercive and controlling behaviour, so that's isolating you from your friends and family, depriving you of your basic needs, monitoring your time, monitoring your online communication tools or using spyware, taking control over aspects of your life such as where you can go, who you can see, what to wear and when you sleep, depriving you of access to support services such as specialist support and medical services, repeatedly putting you down such as telling you that you are worthless, enforcing rules and activities which humiliate, degrade or dehumanise you. Forcing you to take part in a criminal activity such as shoplifting, neglect or abuse of children to encourage self-blame and prevent disclosure to authorities. Financial abuse including controlling finances such as allowing you a punitive allowance. Threats to hurt or kill, threats to a child, threats to reveal or publish information e.g. threatening to out someone, assault, criminal damage such as destruction of household goods, rape, preventing you from having access to transport or from working, controlling or monitoring your daily activities including making you account for your time, dictating what you can wear and when you can eat, isolating you from family and friends, intercepting messages or phone calls or refusing to interpret, intentional undermining of your role as a partner, spouse or parent, preventing you from taking medication or over-medicating you or preventing you from accessing health or social care. So this is again relevant for people who are disabled or have long-term chronic illness, using substances to control you through dependency, using children to control you, threatening to take the children away or manipulating professionals to increase the risk of children being removed into care, parental alienation, including preventing children from spending time with you or their grandparents, from visiting friends' houses and from participating in extracurricular activities, threats to expose sensitive information, e.g. sexual activities, or make false allegations to family members, religious or local community, via photos or the internet, preventing you from learning a language or making friends outside of your ethnic or cultural background, threatening precarious immigration status against you, withholding documents and giving false information to a victim about your visa or giving false information to a victim about your visa or visa application, threats of institutionalization. That's quite a long list or a lot of information you to take on board. If you are an individual and any of these apply to you, you'll probably a victim of domestic abuse. If you have a friend that's in this position or if you're a professional and you need to refer, you need to do it as soon as you possibly can. Obviously ensuring that the individual is safe. So let's just talk about you as a victim. How are you feeling hearing some of these things that are relevant to you? As a friend and you know somebody's going through this, how does it feel for you to have to leave somebody in that state Or, more often than not, somebody you haven't seen for a while, who you suspect has been 
a victim of domestic abuse. The fact that you haven't seen them for a while is probably because their partner or the perpetrator has isolated them. So what do you do about it? There could be a whole host of tips, but the, the biggest thing is when it's safe to do so, where somebody's life is not at risk, speak out. Or where their life is at risk, or violence is escalating, or the abuse is escalating, is to work out a staggered exit strategy. If you visit any website, really, that gives you advice about safety planning, really think about having a grab bag, think about squirreling some money away, think about where you can go. You need to have as many people around you as possible. So if it means walking into a police station and reporting it, do that. If it means speaking to people at work, do that. If it means going to an organisation such as Mankind, then do that. Whatever you do, at the very minimum, you do have to seek help or speak to somebody about it, visit a doctor, but it's really important that you talk about this. Men who are victims of domestic abuse have told me that they haven't reported it because they're embarrassed. They will feel that they will never see their children again if they have children, or they're worried that they'll be deemed a failure or not a real man. But also, they're frightened that they may be outed or information div divulged about them that they'd rather keep private. Abuse is a way of using power and control to, t to limit somebody's choices and get them to behave in the way that the perpetrator would want them to behave. So whenever or however you can, you need to speak out. However, the warning is this, or the worry is this. When you go to the police station or you phone a domestic abuse service, you may have to prove that you are a victim of domestic abuse. How do you do this? First of all, you have to report it to the police. You need to document everything that has occurred. You need to use recordings, you need to have receipts, you need to have a diary of events, but not just of the bad things that happen or the things that are said to you by your, or by the abusers, should I say, but you need to document everything you possibly can when things have gone missing or been taken away from you when people have told you things that are not quite right, you need to document literally everything. If you feel confident enough, then you are more likely to go to, to find a service, either through Mankind, I'll leave some links in the show notes, but essentially you must speak out. There are so many men I've met over the years who have said that they just feel ashamed and embarrassed as if they are the only ones who are victims of domestic abuse. And it doesn't happen to men. But the more you speak out, the more people will understand that it's not just men who are perpetrators of domestic abuse and it's not just women who are victims of domestic abuse. So if you are a man or identify as a male, then please get in touch. I could probably point you in the direction of a service in the UK that can support you. If you have any questions or if you want to tell us your experience, then please do feel free to get in touch. If you're a professional, you can get in touch as well. But I would say, so should you have a client in any service who you believe to be a victim of domestic abuse, then please listen and be objective. What that person tells you is their truth. Gather as much information as you, you possibly can. You would need to refer them on to a professional service. If you're a friend, or somebody who's a victim of domestic abuse. All you can do is listen and support, regardless of what condition they are in. Because the plan is always to get you as a friend out of the picture. So you cannot tell this person or tell the victim that what they're experiencing is wrong. The perpetrator will make them feel that what they are, what the victim is feeling or experiencing is their own fault and that they deserve it and it's right so do not where possible break off friendships or cut family members off when we hear about women they'll say that oh well you know yes it's domestic abuse but they always go back to their partners 
They'll go back to them in the end. What's the point in getting involved? The thing is, why would a victim go back to someone who has been abusive towards them? We'd have to think that possibly it could be safer for them to do that. Or the tie would be family status. It could be cultural reasons. It could be beliefs, ideologies, all sorts of things that can make somebody go back. But the one thing we can't do is abandon those people that go back to their partners. As depressing as it may be, these are real things that are happening around us. So if you are a victim of domestic abuse, speak out. If you're a professional or a friend of somebody who's a victim of domestic abuse, then support them and allow them to speak out. You don't have to speak for them, but you can stand with them while they speak. You can make sure that they don't feel alone and you can also, just by your presence and just by listening, you make the perpetrator weaker. So, so I hope you find this informative. The next episode, we're going to listen to a podcaster and an author called John James who will tell you about his lived experience as a victim of domestic abuse. Thank you for listening to this episode. I'm 87 and this is the 87 Said Podcast. If you have a learned experience of any issues affecting men or you have um, a request for an issue that we should look at, then feel free to get in touch. You can contact me directly via social media or you can send a WhatsApp voice note or message to plus four four seven three six seven zero three four zero zero four that's plus four four seven three six seven zero three four zero zero four please make sure that they are voice notes or text messages also feel free to email but you can also contact me via any of the social networks thank you be good to yourself and others